Okay, Coach Akerley. So, uh, Quest. You guys got a tough team, and I love the fight I saw in a couple of these dual meets you guys had. I watched some barn. You had like three barn burners in a row. Yeah. The Tennessee one was crazy. Yeah. You had to come from behind and win that one. You mm -hmm. had to come from behind and win the uh, the one before that, which was the uh, West Shore. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, your kids yeah. battle today, man. I, I think this is a nice tournament. You know, for the most part, these are all clubs. You know, it's not like you guys, a lot of times you go to these dual tournaments and wrestle an all-star teams, you know? And, and uh, but there's some quality clubs here. You know, Palmer's got a nice club. And, uh, you know, West Shore's always had a nice club. And, uh, you know, it, it's it's nice. It's two, uh, two and a half hour drive for us, and you get to wrestle good quality matches all day, you know? So I look at your club, you know, and there, there's some really, the best clubs in the, in the nation. And, and Pennsylvania's the deepest state, and it's got the best clubs as well. It's not a coincidence. Why is Pennsylvania so dominant at folk style wrestling? You got the most Division One qualifiers every year. You got the most D2 qualifiers. Why is Pennsylvania, what is about your culture and how you guys wrestle, why is that? I think you just hit the nail on the head there. It's a, you know, it's a part of the culture. You know, the families, there's generations of wrestling families that... Uh, you know, dad wrestled, grandpa wrestled, you know, Uncle Tim wrestled, whatever. And, and uh, I also think there's there's pockets where it's it's uh, popular for kids to wrestle. You know, there's, it's, uh, it's, it is the sport in the school, you know. And, uh, and I, think, uh, I think we're blessed, too, with a lot of people... You know, wrestle, have a high high school, college career, and come back and give back to kids too. You know, and that's important. Uh, but no, I think I think you know, wrestling in Pennsylvania is, is uh, you know you do well in Pennsylvania. You're pretty good. Yeah. You know? So I you know I always get to you know the other thing I think we do I think it really makes a little bit of a difference. It does make a difference when they go to the college level is we spend a lot of time mat wrestling. You know, we're a top and bottom state, you know, and, uh, you know, you can even see a little difference in the officiating here where, uh, you know, they call it just a little different on top and bottom than they do in Pennsylvania, you know. Uh, uh, so I, I think that, that has a lot to do with, you know, we are, we're, we're pretty good on, on the map, you know, and we, we, we ride well, we turn people well, and, and uh, for the most part, we get off the bottom pretty good, you know. Uh, you know, if you can take somebody down and get off the bottom, you're hard to beat, you know. So I look at that mat wrestling culture, and I always bring this up to, like, officials in Ohio. They'll let a guy ride someone. They'll let somebody. There, There is skill in holding someone down. Oh, yeah. And I What's think the... getting called for yeah. the bank or stalling and the, doing it. Yeah. These takedown tournaments, unless it's a beginner tournament, yeah. I think that's a garbage way to do things. I mean, the ultimate goal is supposed to be to pin people, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. Look at go, Wade Chalice. Yeah, unless, right? you, unless you go feet to back, it's it's hard to pin people. You yeah. Know, you got to be able to break them down. You, you know, the, if you can break somebody down, your chances of pinning them go way up, you know. Uh, if you can't break people down, then... You know, you, you can ride them, but you're not, you're not going to like score on top too much, you know? Look at some of the all-time greats. Though, like Wade Shell, as I bring him up. That's a Clarion guy, right? Oh, yeah. That yeah, guy could pin work. anyone, right? Yeah, yeah. Look at these guys. But, like, the culture of Pennsylvania wrestling and the mat riding. Nolf, you know, look at, you know, just recently. I mean, Nolf pins a lot of people, and, you know, he doesn't just take you up and, you know, let you up and take you down all day, you know? I mean, look at what the punishing, the punishment on top of Zane Rutherford. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. that yeah. guy yeah. is a hammer on top. Yes, he is. And they're PA guys. You know, the other thing you know, kind of forget about, too, it takes a lot of gas out of the guy's fuel tank, you know, and you get ridden, not, not ridden, but ridden hard, you know, and you're defending the whole time down there. You get tired, you know, and uh, it changes that third period, you know, or even if you take him down early and ride him hard and, uh, in college, a three-minute period, you get an early takedown. You grind them hard for two and a half minutes. You took a lot of fuel out of their tank, you know? Yeah, you got a guy like Mason coaching alongside you. He's a mm -hmm. two-time D1 All-American. Yep. Um, he's a guy that just transitioned out of D1 wrestling as yep. a coach. Yep. And um, he's, he, he jumps right back into it, and he, and he hits the ground running for Quest. Mm -hmm. He said he didn't even miss, like, a weekend, right? <laughs> he moved, and he was, like, back in your guy's room that yeah. week, right? Next week, right? Yeah. So you got a guy like that. You have all these guys. That's obviously a part of the PA culture too, right? But, but what you guys have with your club, right? What do, you've got elite level guys. Let's talk about the mid level guys. I asked some of these other guys, these coaches from Indiana. What do you want the mid level guy to get out of the sport of wrestling? Uh, I, I want them to learn the, 
the lessons you learn from this, you know, how to how to deal with adversity, you know, how to work for something, set goals and try to achieve them. Uh, you know, we end our practice every day with three things, you know, we hold up our fingers. One is, you know, the most important thing I'd like these guys to understand is the importance of just being a good person, you know, being a good person. Number two is a good student and, and being a good athlete's third, you know, in, in that order. And, and uh, you can see kids buy into it, you know, and, and uh, you know, not, not, every, not everybody's going to be perfect. And people make mistakes, but you don't learn from your mistakes, which is another lesson you should be learning from the sport as well. You, know, you make a mistake, it's okay. Let's just try not to do it again, you know, learn and correct mistakes. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, you know, we talk about clubs too, you know, Mason's a good example of it. He grew up in our club since he was a little kid. And, you know, he gets done wrestling at Lehigh, and, and even before he graduated, he's asking if he can come back and coach, you know, because I think he took, you know, he had a lot of, you know, had a lot of value to him being a member of the club. And, uh, and he's excellent with the kids. He's good. He's a great technician, and, uh, uh, you know, he does a great job with them, and uh, he's, he's, a, oh, he's an asset to our program. <laughs> I'm gonna kick my son over. <laughs> um, we'll get you another one, coach. We'll yeah, get you another one. Okay. Right. So, so, um, last thing. What do you want? The mid level, the all level. You want everybody to get like they want to be good people, right? But the last thing, when, when you come to something like this, mm -hmm. right? They get to come two and a half hours, stay in a hotel, yeah. hang out a little bit. What do you want the kids to get out of wrestling experience? What what, what memories do you hold fond about the sport of wrestling? Well, that, that's a lot of great there's memories. You know what I mean? Uh, I can still remember being 10 years old, going to the kid state tournament, and all the fun I had being in the hotel with all these. You know, it was a it was a fun experience. Uh, I'd like them to have some lifelong friendships. You know, which which I've gotten out of the sport. Um, and um, you know, just like I said before, learn, learning how to learning how to work hard for something and, and not expect somebody to give it to you. You gotta, you know, that's one thing about this sport is it's, it's you against another kid, another man, and you know you're responsible for what happens out there. And you know, you're playing football and somebody misses a block, you can blame somebody. You know, in this sport, you know, you you get out of it what you put in it, and uh, you know, you you. You make mistakes, you made mistakes, not somebody else. You can't push the blame on somebody else. And when you win, you win, you know, and you accomplish something. Um, I, think that's, I think that's something that maybe we're missing a little bit in our society today, too. You know, that people think they're, they use, a, use the word entitled, you know, it's kind of getting overused a little bit. But I think there is a lot of people with an entitlement mentality. And, you know, you're not entitled to win here. you got to earn it. You know, in this sport, you, you, you gotta, you gotta work for it. You know, so, uh, I think those are uh, valuable lessons that people, young kids, can take, and they can use it in their academics. They can use it in their social life. They can, you know, use it in, uh, you know, their work when they get older and uh, their professional life. And, and uh, I just think, you know, kids actually buys into working hard and wrestling. He's gonna be successful in life because pretty tough sport you know and if you can handle what this is dishing out you're you're gonna handle a lot of things in life you know all right coach we got some wrestling going on here i'm gonna go run through a wall you got me all fired up <laughs> yeah. i'm gonna go home i gotta go train my kids up get them ready to go and be nice good people yeah. um you got anything else for me no nah, i just uh i'd like to thank you know guy and defense so this is a great great uh great event and uh you know, we'd love to come back every year, and uh, that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> Coach, thanks for the time. Safe travels. Have a great holiday and a happy new year. Same and, 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 Merry hey, Christmas. Get, keep getting after it. Yeah. All right, and we're going to have to sit down and talk again next time I'm around you. That'd be fantastic. Because i got to go get run through this wall real quick, all right? All right, I hear you. I hear all right you. Coach, thanks, all and right. good luck to you guys. Thank you.